This is our Forex blog for January 28, 2013, and I've been working all day on adding some new features to our uh, indexes. And so how to create your index, if this is your first time, just bring up a euro dollar chart, and then add script, go down to FX currency indexes, and then type in star, let's say EUR for the euro dollar. And this will create a chart with all the different, uh, comparing the euro to all the other pairs. And it creates an actual chart where you can kind of see double tops, double bottoms. Previous day's high right here. The dotted red is the previous day's low. One of the things I added today is a plus and minus key to zoom in so you can go back and look and you can see it automatically scales if I zoom in more it automatically scales uh, within one second and that allows you to really get a feel for what the, each individual currency is doing ideally you want to trade the euro when it's underneath its 15 minute moving average which is a white and the hourly which is the red and the weakest currencies are the ones below the previous day's low for the index. The strongest currencies are above both these moving averages and the previous day's high. So I'm just going to uh, bring up a few charts here so you can see how to use this. It's very simple. We'll duplicate that chart, move it over here. I'll put star GDP to see the British pound. Remember, when it first comes up, it's going to be scaled over the multiple days. If you hit the plus and minus key, it will zoom into whatever day you, day you have uh, which allows you to see things uh, a lot clearer. So we'll scroll this back and look at this at the beginning of the day. Let's duplicate this again and, and you can also put our statistical tools on here as well uh, but this is a short blog video because it's late in the day and we'll put the yen on as well. So these are the four uh, individual pairs that most people. Now again, it'll come up with a default scaling. Uh, if you hit the plus or minus key, it will uh, make things bigger. So you can see the yen started the day off up. It's above its hourly, above its 15, and broke out above the previous day's high. And notice how it acts as support. This is a very high probability place to be looking for buys at nine. And you want to trade the yen versus uh, one of the weakest ones. Uh, at nine, you can see the pound was trending down all day. It was underneath the hourly. It also broke the previous day's low, and at nine o'clock, the dollar uh, actually, or I'm sorry, the euro was actually above the previous day's high. So you wouldn't want to trade two strong currencies, two strong currencies against each other. You would find this weakest one, which is the pound, and sell it versus a strong one. Let's look at nine o'clock here. Very high probability place to be buying. Let's bring up the pound yen, and you can see uh, how you can use these indexes to find the highest probability trades. Here's 9 o'clock. Notice if you're just looking at this chart, you wouldn't necessarily know to be selling there, but because the pound is uh, pretty much found the high, it wasn't able to make a higher high, and it kind of double topped here, the yen was in a very strong trend, and clearly one of the stronger trends, and it's at a very key support level. Not only is it the hourly moving average, but it's also the previous day's high for this index. If we zoom out, you can see that Sunday night, the high was right here, which is why it shows uh, there. And so you don't have to zoom out to see the previous day's high because I do it automatically for you uh, because I found it's critical. And I like to be zoomed in and just see today's charts. Uh, and another thing you can do is draw trend lines on here. When is the safe time to buy a yen during a pullback? Well, it's trending up. Draw your trend lines over these highs. And a little bit around 930, good place to buy. You could also say, well, I want to wait for the pound to break this trend line, which is around 930 also. Two trend line breaks, one currency is going up, the other one's going down, and you can see that at that time it falls from around 143, and even if you got out of it somewhere down here, down to 41. 60 pip move. Also note the euro. It rallied up here, double topped, had a breakout, came back down. It made a lower high. You got nice, beautiful uh, wedge pattern right here. And when it broke down a little bit later at 1600, well, this currency 
has been trending up all day. You might have decided to uh, sell the euro yen around uh, 1600. It's a pretty high probability, and uh, let me just say, relatively safe in my opinion, uh, place to be selling it. So here's 1600. You're looking for sales, and it actually broke down a little bit later. And you can see it fell from around 122.05 all the way down to 60. Nice 40 pip move. Or even if you got short right here, you would have made 15 pips. You sell it again here, you made another 20. And so that's how you use this. And uh, the Australian and New Zealand were both weak today. Remember when they actually, uh, the New Zealand was weaker than this one. This is a perfect example uh, of one that was breaking out over the highs uh, of the day or for the multi-hour. Uh, a little bit around 1900. Which one was the weakest uh, at 1900? Well, this is still trending down. You might have sold the pound Australian uh, around 1900, just a little bit ago. Or actually, it's a little bit before that. Let's see the exact time here. This is actually 1925 when it breaks out. That's this trade right here. And it falls from about 50 down to 32. 18 pip move. I believe it was in New Zealand that was weak earlier. Yeah, this is a perfect example. Tight range from the previous day. Breaks down underneath the low here at 3 o'clock. What's a strong one at 3 o'clock? Well, the yen's clearly uh, trending up. The dollar's also strong. So what do you do? You sell the New Zealand dollar and the New Zealand yen um, at that breakout uh, around 2.30. 2.30, we're going to scroll back and take a look at this. Here it is. Not only is the New Zealand breaking out of its index low, uh, but you can also see the same things happening with the New Zealand uh, dollar, and it falls um, 70 pips. Very, even if you miss that first move, you got a nice little sell here, nice little rectangle shape right here. Uh, I wouldn't have continued to sell down here because you know the first trade is the easiest, highest probability. The second one's pretty high probability. Third's a little bit lower, and uh, you know you really you are starting to take risks the farther down it goes. But you can draw your fibs on there. This is a pretty decent, decent size move. This sell here is pretty high probability. Here's your first profit target. Here's your second. Let's look at the New Zealand yen. 2 o'clock, 2.30, we're looking to sell this. And you can see just absolutely beautiful trend down. And when you're watching this chart and you see the New Zealand just go down and down, it's pretty much going down against every other currency. It's, not, it's pretty much not going up against anything. And, and then it goes sideways here. So, you know, when a currency is down this much, if you want to look for a counter trend trade, when it goes sideways like that and it's fallen, 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 and it goes above the high here, you know, you can see it's been going up the rest of the day. You would probably want to trade the New Zealand against one that's uh, weaker, like the, the dollar, for instance, or the pound. If you bought, or I'm sorry, if you sold the pound New Zealand after about 7 in the morning, notice down all day. Um, you know, So th this is a wonderful tool and you can use trend lines. As long as the currency is above its trend line, uh, you know, and, and especially once it hits once or twice, when it pulls back near it and goes sideways like this, this is a pretty high probability place to buy, uh, 1830. Um, now, obviously the New Zealand's on the bottom pier here, so at 1830 we're look actually looking to sell this. It's rallied up a little bit, it breaks down through the lows, and you can see it fell from uh, 88.13 all the way down to 87.61. It's a pretty huge move. Uh, very high probability trading using the indexes. And that's without all the other tools that add to the probability that I didn't really want to spend too much time on this today. Just a quick little blog video and keep everyone up to date. The new feature uh, in this is automatic scaling. When you zoom out, it will automatically, within one second, scale to whatever the bars that are visible on the chart. We just put that function in over the weekend and I finished it and tested it today. So hopefully tomorrow we'll release it. It's much more useful when you can zoom in and see the latest uh, moves on the chart.